Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Account, and welcome back to the channel. We've got all the Future Stars Team 2 cards, icons, SBCs, and that big Academy midfielder evolution, but did it actually live up to the hype? That's what I want to talk about today, a little bit in today's video, go over all the content that dropped yesterday, talk about how some of the market is flying, but also how some of it could change today on Saturday with some of the content that is coming out and specifically a part of the market that is really low that we need to get invested in, I think, for the coming week on this game. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new. Let's go over all the Future Stars content from yesterday. Of course, we'll go to objectives first. There's a lot to go over, right? There was a lot that came out with Future Stars yesterday. We'll go with first the objective player. Vil Hall, I don't know how to say this name, guys. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, Leverkusen, women's team, four-star, four-star, right mid player with some pace. I mean, not a bad card, not a great card, pretty easy to get done. Already completed a few things on her objectives by just playing literally two games of foot champ. So there is a 1,000 XP in here, though, and you do get a couple of decent packs. So make sure you get that one done for the packs. Of course, we do have a Future Stars Cup which does give us some packs and it gives us a chance to use our future stars players. You have to use two of them in the cup, um, which this does allow everybody to use. If they do not have any future stars players, you can use the players that were given in the free packs for the Evo. So the in progress future stars Evo cards. If you put one of these into your team, it counts and it works. So everybody can do this cup, uh, whether you have future stars cards or not. Yesterday, I was able to pack Xerxes and Diakite from saved 85 doubles and 84 times fives. So that was very nice. And that'll help out for the cup this week as well. No loan players is pretty cool, in my opinion, as well for a cup. And the rewards... It's going to be worth playing, I'll be honest. The, the cup is pretty nice. You have to play 10. You get 1,000 XP, 500 from each uh, section of the objective. And then winning 10 games gets you an 83 times 10. There's an 85 plus player pick in here. I think it's a cup that's worth playing, guys. You get an 86 double at the end. Really solid cup, in my opinion. And I think that was all of the new content that we got in objectives yesterday. It was the cup and it was the player objective. Now, let's go to SBCs and talk about that. Because the cup was decent, right? Objectives are okay. SBCs, we had Lauren Hemp. Definitely not as hype as last week's Claudia Pena. Um, just because of the price. Like, this is a very hyped card. Don't get me wrong. A lot of people are doing this SBC straight away because of how hyped her Thunderstruck card and even her Gold card was earlier on in the year. But for me, it's the price that just sets it into a range where it's I don't know, for me, not worth it. It doesn't fit my team. But if you're looking for somebody on the wing to put balls into the box for heading, for crossing uh, purposes, like this is going to be one of the best crossing cards in the game. 97 crossing with whipped pass plus, insane dribbling, crazy stamina. She'll be able to run up and down the left side. Biggest problem here is the composure, I think. 75,000 coins. The rest of the play styles on the card are solid. Um, again, it's a very hyped player. But it's not an SBC I think I'm going to end up doing. Only 26% upvoted. But when you actually look at the card, the card itself has a pretty much... It was about 50-50. It still is. 50-50 upvote to downvote ratio. That's why I'm saying her card is very hyped. But this SBC, I think, for the price that it is, is probably not worth it. But it is craftable still with the 85 double that is out. And hopefully... The 80 plus player picks continue, continuing around through this next week. That'd be very, very nice um, if you wanted to craft Lauren Hemp, you could get her SBC done that way. So, I mean, another way to tell that this is a very hyped SBC is that her Thunderstruck card is dropping a ton on the market. Like sometimes you've seen it before where uh, some players get SBCs and then their cards in the market go up because the one on the market's better than the one that's in the game. Or it's just for the coins, it's not. But this hemp card is down a lot. Um, I think she was like 180 or 90,000 coins, and now she's like 130. Looks like she might be close to bouncing a little bit right now. But that's a big price difference from the SBC. That's one for me that I'm going to skip on, especially because of some of the icon SBCs we have upcoming. I want to talk about those in a minute as well. Two other SBCs we had yesterday. Diogo Jota, 89 rated. But the price, again, here is the problem. Yes, he's four-star skills, five-star weak foot. He's rapid plus. He's high, high work rates. It's a solid card. If you're a Liverpool fan, you might get it done just because it's the best Jota that we have in the game. But again, another one for me where it's just not that great. It's just okay. And then we do have the refresh of the 83-plus player pick, which includes this team of the week, Team League 22, with the same requirements as always for that one. So that was 
our SBC content. Not as hype as last week, for sure. Didn't impact the market as much in terms of fodder. Didn't impact people's teams as much, especially with hemp, unless that was one that you wanted to do right away. Now we got to talk about the Evo because this was one thing we talked about at length yesterday, right? Was the midfielder Future Star Academy evolution and it dropped yesterday, guys. And it's probably the least hype out of the three attackers, midfielders and defenders. I think this one gives decent play styles. OK, I, I think it gives decent play styles, but I think it's actually the problem with this Evo is the, the player selection. Um, I mean, it's not terrible. I'm happy to have Oliver Skip in here. Um, Adley looks good. This actually Saibari card from PSV might be one of the better ones out of this. Loman from the women's Bayern Munich team looks pretty good. Thiago Almada looks decent. Um, but when you look at these cards up, upgraded and updated after you finish the Evo, they look good. They don't look absolutely insane though, especially for like a stay back or a box to box center mid. A lot of these cards have like medium something work rates, medium, medium for Saibari, at least the good cards, right? High medium for Illich, more of a center attacking mid, you would think. He's left-footed, three-star, five-star. Yes, it looks solid. Like, I think this Evo, I say it's the worst out of the attacking and the defender Evos just because of the player selection and who's involved in it, honestly. Uh, the upgrade itself is solid. And hey, you guys know I love Tiki Taka Plus. I think that is a very underrated um, play style in this game. I think this Almada card looks solid. Onahi looks solid. But I think if we were missing some of the other players from maybe clubs like Manchester United. Like, I, I mean, a lot of people wanted Kobe Manu in this. That was probably a little bit unrealistic. Or Bajectic from Liverpool. Like, one or two of those cards being implemented into this as a possible Evo would have been, I think, a little better than the card selection that we have. Um, and especially for the weak foot and the skills for some of these cards too. Again, it's not bad. We're being really nitpicky, right? Because the attacker and the defender ones were both really, really good and they got us really excited. This one felt like it just fell short of the expectations a little bit. Now, personally, I think I might do Thiago Almada here, but I might actually put his card into the attacker Evo because if you take a look at that version of his card, um, I think it looks better with the five-star skills. And that's one thing I will mention as well. I think every single one of these midfielders fits into the attacker Evo. So if you saved any of your attacker evolution options for this, or if you left that open, I think all these cards do fit it. So that's something to consider um, if you wanted to do some of that. So now you can create some combinations, which is pretty cool. I don't believe any of them fit into the, the defender's Evo though, um, to say the least there. So yeah, you do get a weak foot upgrade. You do get intercept and tiki taka and you do get a nice boost in stats guys but i think um it's just a slight bit underwhelming compared to some of the other evos that we have had and actually another way to tell that it's not that crazy is it's not making the market crash like that was the thing that we saw with the other evos is that it really made the market get destroyed and right now like middle tier to high tier midfielders they're not being panic sold that much at all. This Grimaldo Winter Wild Cards is like one card that I saw that is like just down a little bit. Like he was 90K or like 93 to 97,000 coins. And yeah, he's down to 83,000 coins now. But that's not much of a drop comparatively to what we saw for the other attacking and defender Evos earlier when they were released. So really... It's an okay Evo. Like in all reality, that is a really cool Evo where you can take somebody, get them upgraded with two playstyle pluses, but it's just not living up to the hype that I think we all had for the evolution that we expected to come for this promo for the last one at least. Now there is another Evo that is leaked and we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, I do need to pull up that Evo here. Give me one second. But I do want to look at the promo cards that we had dropped today on this game because we did have... Basically, everybody that was released. There was a couple cards that were missing, and I do want to talk about that in uh, in today's video a bit as well. But the promo team, it actually, I think it lived up to our expectation, guys. With this promo team, with the icons and the stat boosts, once again, these cards got. The stat boosts here are insane. But also, these cards are, because of that, really expensive. And a lot of people are saying, Nate, the pack weight's down for this promo. And I completely understand where that sentiment is, because a lot of these cards are more expensive. But... I would argue that the pack weight is still about the same. It's just EA kind of put more top tier cards in this team too. Think about it. When we look at team one of future stars, we had a couple of top tier cards, right? We had Doku, Boniface, James, Garnacho, Balde, and Rodman that were expensive and rare. And like the rest of the promo team was under 150K and pretty packable and really cheap. I think we just had more of what you would call fodder cards in team one of future stars. 
And since the quality of the entire team is better, there's more of those rare types of cards in Team 2, um, that the pack weight is maybe a slight bit worse, but it's actually still pretty comparable based on the percentages. Remember yesterday in the YouTube video, we looked at that store pack and we said that super giant store pack, it was an 80% chance of packing a future star, mini release included. Right now we're at 70% chance, so yes, that is lower. But we're going to add three more future stars into that pool probably today, albeit probably lower rated ones, which might pull that percentage up. So maybe it's like 75 to 77 percent after the mini release is put in. So it is still a slight bit lower potentially than team one. But honestly, I'll take it because yesterday I was able to pack Xerxes and I was able to pack um, Diakite, which both look phenomenal for the price that they are on the market. Xerxes is six foot four with a power heading and power shot trait. That card is mad fun. Tried him out for like one game. Can't wait to use him a bit more this weekend and further on. Really fun card to try for cheap. Diakite can play center back. Pacho looks really cracked for a center back card as well. So the, the fodder cards, I think, look better out of this team, even though they're maybe going to cost a little bit more, which maybe makes them slightly harder to pack. One card I absolutely love the price out of this team and just the upgrade is Olise. Five-star skill, four-star weak foot boost on Elise. He's got Trivella and he's got Pinged Pass. 150,000 coins for this card with the other playstyles, Finesse, Dead Ball, Long Pass, Long Ball Pass, Technical Flare, Acrobatic, and the stats that he has, 99 Agility. That is a really fun card to try. He's kind of like the Harvey Elliott or the Arda Guler from last week where he is very packable and he's pretty cheap. Love that. Um, and then, yeah, Rico Lewis, I think, is overpriced, but he um, will come back down. He's a bit more rare, as some of the other cards are. Hoyland is one that we're disappointed with. We're disappointed with the work rates on this card. I wish they would have made him high-medium. I mean, who wants to use a striker that has medium-high work rates, you know? Um, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, the card does look good, but medium high work rates does definitely put me off of using the card. And I think that's hurting his price as well. He was just under 400,000 coins. Looks like he's having a bit of a fluctuation up in price right now. Cause again, these cards, they are pretty rare to be completely honest. They are pretty rare guys. So they're moving a lot in price. I think less people opened packs today as well as compared to last week. Um, people were maybe saving packs during road to the final, knowing that future stars was coming. I think some people opened those packs last week and there's less of that this week. The stats on the card look fine. Like he genuinely looks decent power shot and first touch for a six foot three physical type striker. He should be pretty good in the box, but the medium high work rates are a little bit of a problem. You're going to have to definitely, um, probably set him on stay forward so that he actually stays forward. But yeah, 400 K, I think he's going to end up dropping off a good bit as I think a lot of this team will drop off in price. I mean, we saw it last week with Future Stars team number one. The player prices dropped off a lot from like Friday into Saturday into Sunday. Remember Harvey Elliott went from like 120K to like 50 or 60K by the time we got to Sunday and Arda Guler went from over 100 to 60 at minimum price. I think Olise is probably going to end up being 100K. Rico Lewis needs to be in the 200K range. Nico Williams needs to drop a lot. Hoyland's going to end up being 250, I think. He's going to dip down. And then, like, some of these cards, like, I don't know why Mukoko's 900K. Like, some of these cards are just really rare, which also makes me think that less people open packs. EA is not dropping the great lightning rounds. When I look at this card, I see a card that is actually worse than the Boniface from Team 1 of Future Stars. I know Technical Plus is cool, and it's very meta, and it's honestly, this card's a lot different than Boniface anyway, just the way they play in game. But that's why I went out and picked up Boniface yesterday. I bought Boniface for 300,000 coins, 289, and he exploded. Some of the cards from Team 1 have absolutely exploded, guys, because of, number one, the rarity, but number two, it's just they were so much cheaper comparatively to this Team 2. Doku's up a couple hundred thousand coins. Garnacho is rising. Balde is up. Lukiba, Rodman, Elliot, um, Lauren James. I have two of her card. Like all of these are starting to go up in price. Even some of the icons as well. I bought a Rooney at 1.15. Um, Carlos is up now. Gerard is up. Um, so some of those prices are starting to rise because the future stars, the new ones, are a bit expensive. Really quickly, let's look at the icons from Team 2. Decent icons. More fodder ones, though. Got two so 170k, Nedved 150. Nedved for 150 looks like a really fun card if you're on a low budget. Four star, five star, really solid card there for the budget. I don't know why Puyol is 400k. I think it's because of the name. Uh, this card to me should be like 250, just really cheap like the rest of the cards are, but maybe he's somehow cracked in game. And then, of course, they actually did it, guys. They gave us 
the plus 10 pace on David Beckham once again. Fair play to EA. Um, and once again, there was some confusion with this yesterday. If you're trying to find this card on the game, you have to search the 65 rated version. It's very annoying that this has not been fixed. But to find David Beckham, you have to search his base version from the old game, then search him up on the market and you'll see the card. He is extinct though at um, 1.9 million coins. A lot of cards were extinct and then EA updated price ranges on the main cards in Future Stars just a little bit ago. That's why Cole Palmer's 6 mil. Zaire Emery was 5 million after extinct at 1.9. In reality, these cards are really rare and I think they do need to they do need to drop and they will drop. But at the moment, they're very rare to start off uh, into the, the beginning of the weekend. So overall, the team is definitely better than Team 1. I would say that the icons as well are better than Team 1 um, for the fact that most of them are on the market. I guess except Zico and Beckham. But there's more middle tier ones. Like, Rivaldo got the weak foot boost. This Kelly Smith looks pretty solid. Um, but I'm actually a little more hopeful for the Icon species going forward, which I want to talk about. Now, to talk about the market a little bit, we already mentioned a little bit of the prices, like, on the Team 1 of Future Stars going up. And, you know, that happened for sure because these cards are really cheap compared to the new ones. Now, for the rest of the game, prices are doing well. There wasn't a lot of crashing on the market, as we mentioned, and some prices have even gone up further because there wasn't a lot of panic yesterday. And there's not a lot of panic heading into today on Saturday, at least right now, with what's out. Because the new promo is cool and it's nice, but a lot of the stuff, again, is expensive. And nothing really, like, went crazy yesterday to cause a lot of cards to, tra to crash. So, honestly, right now, if I was trading, I'd be on the out-of-packs market like this Joao Felix. Really rare card. I've been watching him go down. He's 520. Yesterday, he was all the way up at 550. This is a card that if you can get for 500K, you can sell it for a higher price and you can flip that card. But uh, I do still expect for the Future Stars impacts, I expect them to drop today, as we mentioned, but they should be really, really good to trade with. Really good because a lot of people like them. And you know, last weekend, we made a ton of coins on these cards. Hopefully, we'll be able to do it again this weekend as well because the cards are hype and people want to try them again because it's future stars so the market seems to be in a good place it's going to take some sort of leaks some sort of news or information to create panic to upset the market a lot at this point in my opinion now let's look forward let's look forward into today on saturday what could be coming out what could be changed in this game first of all last saturday dropped the mini release i think that's going to be happening today as well if ea follows suit and if you're like nate where's udogi Where's Kiwi Art? We have a North London Derby in the showdown, I guess you could say, for the mini release today with Udogi and Kiwi Art, both from Arsenal and Spurs, left out, but still leaked. That should be a pairing of cards that comes in the mini release today, as well as Bool. Uh, her card from the women's Bayern team, she was not released today. And then I think there's one other card from a Bundesliga center attacking mid that we looked at yesterday in the video that was not released yet. So hopefully those three or four cards drop today on this game um, as a part of the mini release. And then EA would drop their bigger store packs too. But what I'm really looking forward to is whoever's going to be our SBC today, guys, because we have two Future Star Icon Center uh, SBC is leaked, one of which is center back Cannavaro, and the other one is Baggio. So two Italians, two cards that have not had special icons yet this year. Baggio, I don't know, man. I haven't used Baggio for a long time in an ultimate team. He has five-star skills and technical plus. If they upgrade his work rates, if they make him 5-5, five, five, we could look at a really, really good icon SBC right here, guys. Maybe they made Pina cracked last week and cheap. Maybe they'll make either Baggio or Cannavaro this week cracked and cheap. Hopefully two playstyle pluses for both of these cards. The Icon SBCs for Rykard um, and whoever else we got last week that I'm blanking on at the moment, um, they weren't that great, right? But hopefully this week that can change. I do expect that we get one of those two today because last Saturday we had uh, an Icon player SBC. Cannavaro could be cracked as well. Again, he's on the shorter side, right? Five foot nine. He's got really good um, f defending stats though. He makes up for it. He does have aerial. So We'll have to see, man. He's got 88 heading and 91 jumping. Like, Cannavaro is a legendary icon in this game, especially in the past couple of years. So, especially if Puyol has some hype. I haven't used him. Maybe you guys in the comments let me know if the new Puyol is really cracked. But if he's really cracked, then Cannavaro could end up being cracked too because they're both kind of similar. A bit shorter, a bit more shifty, better movement-wise, and just really good at defending. I'm really looking forward to those SBCs because those could change... Like, that could be one of those SBCs if EA give them a really big boost. And even if they make them expensive, that could be an SBC worth grinding for 
over the next couple of weeks, kind of like a more expensive SBC to put higher rated fodder into if they give them a proper juice with two playstyle pluses. That's what I'm crossing my fingers for. And because of that, and also probably an Icon player pick SBC coming soon. I think the Icon player pick might actually be on Sunday, but I want to talk about it today as my menus are looking really scuffed and SBCs here. Guys, I think we have to look at investing in fodder because as expected, there wasn't anything crazy for fodder, but since there's not, it's going down. 86 is 7.5K, 85s, 4,000 coins. 87s are still 12k, but 88s are like 18,000 coins again, guys. Very low. 89s are 29k a piece. Very low. 90s are back to 40, 45,000 coins. 91s are 60k a piece. Very, very low. I think it's time to think about getting involved in the fodder this weekend. Um, if there's nothing that comes out today on Saturday, it could go lower. But this I, it has to be a low point for some of this stuff, guys. I really think that it it has to be um, with SBCs upcoming. Probably the icon player pick making the fodder move the most. So if you're going for a quick icon player pick flip this week, you probably want to try to get it on, I would say 87s, 88s, 89s would move the best for an icon player pick. They like to price those around what, like the three to 400,000 coin range. So that's what I would say there. Try to get involved in the 87s, the 88s, the 89s. But if you want to go long term and you're hoping that one of the icon SBCs is really great, try to get involved with the 90s and 91s because like long term, they are low. These cards are low, but we need more SBCs to come out to make these prices go up. And again, Mbappe Player of the Month is like technically out there. It's possible, but I don't think it's actually going to happen. I think Ben Yedder is going to win. So we'll have to see based off of that. But for right now, I'm taking a look at cards that I have on my transfer list and I'm holding because the market seems to be doing very good and things just seem to be getting more rare than less rare. And uh, especially for this Rooney that I picked up, he's now out of packs. I hope he continues to go up. So I'm just going to keep holding on to my cards, guys, um, because these especially rare ones should keep going up. And watch those new ones, Future Stars Team 2, for some good flips and trades this weekend. But the market seems to have chilled out a bit, and it seems to be doing pretty well. Hopefully EA drops some good content today. That Icon SBC is what I'm really looking forward to. Cannavaro, Baggio, give us a banger, EA. So that's the video for today, guys. If you did enjoy, drop a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions, and subscribe if you're new. It's been Nathan Wood Accountant. See you guys later. Peace. Out.